Okay, so we're going into logic. Okay, so if you want to try to follow along with a little bit faster pace, feel free to do so. Uh, but know that I'm going to go through it quickly, and then I'm going to go back through it a little bit more slowly, asking questions along the way. Okay, uh, my startup screen looks a little bit different than your startup screen because this is actually something I want you guys to fix for me. So if you want to go ahead and launch logic at this point, um, you guys have it. Uh, the default is that it opens up a project for you, and that's in a lab situation, that's not helpful because that's not always your project, yes? You can imagine if this was on your own personal laptop, it'd be useful to immediately open up the last project I was working on. Uh, we're going to fix that so that it's less confusing for you guys and for other uh, classes. So if you go up into the logic uh, menu, go to Preferences General, and there's this option here which says Project Handling, and yours is probably set to open most recent project. Can you go ahead and change that to ask? Okay. If you change it to ask and then close it, it should now, I'm going to go ahead and quit logic just to prove the point. And next time I launch logic, I get this startup screen, which is what I actually want, okay? Okay. Um, and this is going to make it a lot easier for us to go through those first four steps, which is a recap. So last time I mentioned four steps. So starting a new pro new empty project. Okay. And that new empty project immediately asks me if I want to add a track. So I'm going to go ahead and add this audio track. I'm going to create it. Okay. Uh, who remembers the next thing? Is something to do with this grid. Yeah, change it to time, right? Okay, and then I have to go into the file project settings general. <coughs> what now? It is. Oh, it is under navigate. Ooh, Grace found a shortcut. Where? Oh, sorry, it's under record. It says. Ah, look at that. Okay, good. I like it when people find shortcuts, so that's much easier to find. So record, use musical grid. If I just uncheck that, it's going to change it to a time-based grid, which for this project is much more appropriate, okay? And then the last thing I'd say when setting up your project is go ahead and save it. I'm going to save mine to the desktop. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Mac, uh, when you get into this screen, you can either click on desktop. There's a keystroke command D, which will bring up the desktop, and I'm going to go ahead and call mine Oh, let's see, 0128, right, uh, in class, okay? Um, now, uh, if you've got the um, Zoom recorder, you've got an SD card that looks something like this, okay? And you can pop that in, and you can uh, load your sound files from the Zoom recorder, okay? For today's demo, I've actually provided you with a few uh, recordings on on today's notes. So if I go to current week notes for January 28th, I've got this this file that I've attached called demo files. Uh, so if you haven't gotten your Zoom recorder yet and you haven't gone out and recorded and you need some stereo files to work with today, here's three stereo files for you to download and use. And I'm going to go ahead and use those in my demo here. I'm going to save them. They're about 40 megs, so it'll take a minute or two for it to download. Um, but your browser should have an interface like this. Uh, once they're done downloading, do, 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 do. Uh, this spyglass actually will take you to the files on the hard drive. <laughs> Uh, and if I, let's see, I'm going to clean up my screen here, hide that, hide that, oh, not all of that, okay, so I'll just minimize that, okay. So even if I stay in the downloads folder and just double click, the, this is what's called a zip archive, and you're going to need to create a zip archive for the final <coughs> version, not the draft on Wednesday, but the final version, okay. Uh, and inside here I've got three audio files that I want to add to my project, okay. 
Uh, if I drag them just straight out of the browser onto the track, that's one way to do it, but there's actually inside of each project the ability to see all media files that are part of my project. Okay? It's, called the, it's also called the browser, which is a little confusing. So if I click, see that? Yes, over here in this corner, there's this little icon which shows me, I don't know, these, there's actually three icons here, okay? So it says browsers project, okay? And if I go back to the finder, I can take these audio files and I can drag them in to my project, okay? <laughs> And when I save my project again, either by going to File, Save, or that's a keystroke you should learn is Command S, okay? It's now added those sound files to my project, okay? And so just by dragging them into the browser and then saving the project, they're now going to be part of my, my project. So let me just prove that to you. If I go over here to, here's my project that I saved. And it says audio files. Look at that. There's a copy of my sound files that I just copied over for me. Okay. Yours might look a little bit different depending on how the project was saved, but I'm just showing you that real quick. Okay. So the browser is where you want to add clips. Okay. Because the browser lets you kind of see all the clips that are part of your project. Maybe not necessarily that are in use, but if you want to get at them at any given time, you can just drag them from the browser. Okay. So uh, let's do that first. I'm going to take this Davis Demo 23. I'm going to drag it into my track. Okay. And if I hit play up here, this should sound somewhat familiar. No. Record, and then I had to hit play in order to get it started. So introduce yourself again, Chase. So Chase Brown. I want to be able to demonstrate what it looks like on the waveform later when we bring this into the software. So, let's okay. so this is actually the audio that we recorded, that Sage recorded with the Zoom recorder up here, and Chase and I were standing next to it. Yes, okay. So that's what this sound file is. Uh, say I decide I want to use part of that for my project, okay. I can hide this browser just to get more screen real estate. I do recommend expanding so you can actually see both channels, okay, on the, the vertical zoom, okay, which is up here. You've got vertical zoom here. You've got horizontal zoom here. Okay, uh, and if I decide that I want to hear, let's see. I think at the end of this, I kind of introduce our listener. Still, listen. repeat without it being audible. And just kind of pay attention to the sounds around you for a minute. That sounds like a lovely introduction to my 30-second sound piece. Okay, so I, with, I'll let's start with some instructions of uh, me actually talking. Uh, okay. Uh, so if you remember the tool palette, you hit the T in order to get to the tool palette, okay? And in the tool palette, there's this option for the scissors tool. The scissors tool is for splicing your audio file up, okay? So if I click on the scissors tool, I can actually splice the waveform here, but I want to make a, I want to zoom in a little bit just to make a point, okay? Okay. You can see how this, let's see, yeah, that's as much as I'm going to get, okay? Maybe I'll, let me zoom back out. One thing to pay attention to when you're splicing your waveform is where the zero crossings are. Yeah, I can see it here, okay? See how this bottom waveform, I'll even zoom in, okay? See how it's above the line here and it's passing through the line, the center line here and going back below? You're going to get a much cleaner splice if you splice around the part where the waveform crosses through that zero line. Okay, the splice is going to sound a lot cleaner because if I splice here, what happens is it creates a sudden transition, a sudden drop off, and you'll get a pop at the end of your edit. Okay, so if you want to avoid those pops at the end of your edit, it's much cleaner to look for these zero crossings, is what they're called, and edit here. Okay, um, I don't expect you to be perfect on that this early in your digital audio careers, but that's just a bit of advice. Something you need to learn over time is splicing at those zero crossings will help you have cleaner audio. And in fact, when you have a stereo file, you need to look for two zero crossings. And so right here is actually a good place for me to splice. Okay, so I'm going to undo. Oh, I don't need, don't, don't need to zoom there. Let me zoom back out. So what I, I wanted to hear me say, be still. Whoa. No, 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 no. I don't want you there. Double click, go away. Without it being audible, 
and just kind of pay attention. Be still. There's the be still. So I want to cut right here at the beginning of me saying be still. Be still. So there's the B. I can in here like that. See how I'm, I'm, I got a zero crossing in the first channel and the second channel? They don't need to be going the same direction, but if you can sync that up, it will make your, your edit a much cleaner edit. Uh, I'm going to use this scissors tool here and get back to that. Zoom back out. Be still. Breathe deep without it being audible. And just kind of pay attention to the sounds around you for a minute. Okay, I'm going to cut it here. Go back to the scissors tool. Okay. And once I've got an edit that I like, like I, I like this region right here. I like this, por this portion of the click. This is the part that I want to use, okay? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click here, and I can just simply hit the delete key and, I, and get rid of these other bits of sound, okay? Uh, to show you what that looks like in the browser, in the browser you'll see that it actually shows you the whole sound file, but then it also shows you whatever sub-regions you create. So this is the, the one that I've actually just created. Uh, and again, it has this very unhelpful name of Davis Demo 0123.3. Yes, if I just simply double click here, I'm going to say be still and listen. Okay. Get in the habit now of naming your regions. And you see how when I changed it in the browser, it also changed it in the, on the track, in the timeline. Okay. Uh, I'm going to click and let me create some more screen real estate here. I'm going to click and drag and move that back to the beginning. That's going to be the beginning of my piece now. Okay. So if I hit, this is uh, the transport over here. If I go to the beginning and then I hit play. Be still, breathe deep without it being audible. <laughs> Just kind of pay attention to the sounds around you for a minute. Okay, so that's now the beginning of my piece. Where do I want to go from there? I've got three other sound, three other stereo recordings that I that I want. You guys want to hear uh, church bells in Zurich, or do you want to hear a baseball game in Korea? Church bells. Church bells. Okay, I heard church bells, so I'm gonna bring the church bells up here. So we're being still, we're listening to the sounds around us, and then we can transition into. Okay, so I don't probably want to start there, or, or maybe I do. I don't know. If I want to grab a few seconds, uh, I can jump over here where it kind of... Okay, I, I like that. Maybe that's where I want to cut it, and I'm going to zoom in. Ooh, look at that. I landed right on the zero crossing. Scissors. Zoom back out. Probably before the end there, I'm going to clip it there before I get those leaves that the wind kind of picked up and started blowing, okay? So I'm going to clip it there, and then I'm going to zoom back out, okay? And let's see, delete that, delete that. I'm going to slide it back over. And let's listen to that transition. To move the sounds around you for a minute. Kind of a rough transition. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of awkward. It might be better to do something else with it, but uh, I can kind of drag this back and forth. And one thing I can do that Logic does for me immediately with just a single track is that when I overlap regions, it will actually create a crossfade between them. It's actually a setting, so you have to pay attention to it. You can actually move out of this default behavior, but the default behavior for dragging things over uh, and, and actually overlapping two regions of sound, two clips of sound, is to create a crossfade between them. Okay, So if I just simply take this and drag it, let's see, click and drag over and let go, let me see what happens there. You see this? there's this overlay graphic, basically, and what... What logic is conveying to us is that 
be still and listen is actually going to fade out, and then Zurich Bell's 0.3 is going to fade in at the same time. Whatever overlap there is, that's the amount of time that the fade out and the fade in are going to occur. Okay, it it happens automatically when you drag them. Okay, so if I scroll back out and listen to it now, I don't know. So the the point I want to make here is there's two different ways you can transition between sounds. You can either transition with a hard cut, which is what I had before here, or uh, with a let's see with a, trans a crossfade, if you will, okay? By just simply dragging them over each other, it's gonna create a crossfade between these two sounds. Make sense? Okay, that happens automatically on a single track. We don't have to get into multi-tracking in order to do that, okay? Um, let's see, so I promised you guys, uh, the other one is Korean baseball. Anybody know what to expect of Korean baseball? <laughs> So the, the practice in Korea is that the entire time that your team is up to bat, your side of the stadium stands up and cheers raucously with cheerleaders kind of banging on drums. They have little jingles for each one of the batters, basically, and it's, it's a whole experience if you've never uh, uh, done it. I highly recommend it if you ever go to Korea to take in a baseball game because it's a completely different experience than it is here in the United States. Uh, but let's grab something. <laughs> That sounds good. I'll just uh, grab that little bit of audio here in the middle. Again, zooming in, looking for that zero crossing. Ooh, this one's nice. I can see right there. Switch over to the scissors tool. Clip. Uh, and then go back out. And I'm going to clip it. Who knows? Here at the beginning. Okay. Um, I can also, the other thing I can do, if you get tired of uh, switching to the glue tool, you can actually grab the beginning, let's see here, grab the beginning of a region at the bottom uh, corner. So the bottom corners let you kind of shrink the region, so chop things off the beginning. So now I'm going to slide this truncated Korean baseball sample over here. I'm going to get rid of this and... I can, if I just simply drag it over here, I can crossfade between these. Let's hear how that sounds. Okay, that's a rough ending, yes. <laughs> it could just cut, again, the, ch the, the edit, the cut, gives you a kind of sudden transition, right? Uh, but I can go and I can, uh, if I decide I want a little bit more of that, I can just simply grab that bottom corner and extend it, okay, which is helpful. Uh, but the other thing I can do, uh, right alongside the, let's see, we've been looking at the, the scissors tool and we even used the glue tool a little bit, but there's also a fade tool. So if you get to the end of your project and you want to create a fade out, just simply switch over to the fade tool. And if I just simply click and drag, let's see. Okay, everybody see that, that line that was just created there? And now I can just simply grab this if I want a longer fade or a shorter fade, and I simply play it back. Okay, it'll fade out nicely. Okay, so cross fades, sudden cuts, fade outs, okay, those are techniques that you want to be employing in your project overall. Um, that's what I want to cover in terms of uh, techniques, the next part is getting this out of the project. So yeah, Nicholas. Can you also use that tool to make it fade in? Yes, you can. So if I decide that I wanted to fade in at the beginning here, there it is. See it? I've got a handle now, basically, so I can fade in. Okay? And this can be as short as you need it to be. So if I zoom in and, you know, this is now a... So on this time scale, this is this is one millisecond, two milliseconds, three milliseconds. So this is now a three millisecond uh, fade in, which three milliseconds is three one thousandths of a second, basically. So it can be as short as you need it to be. Uh, so this is one way to get rid of a pop if you didn't catch that zero crossing that I was talking about before, is to add a little short fade in, okay? 
Um, so now, how do we get this out of here? Well, a couple things I want to call your attention to. Okay, first save if you're happy with it. Okay, uh, I do. Let's see, I do recommend listening to it through before you bounce it out. Okay, uh, but I'm gonna, in the interest of time, just kind of assume this is aesthetically perfect and exactly the the uh, project that I'm going for here. Okay. Um, one thing that logic does is it adds this, you might want to zoom all the way out because logic is going to add a marker somewhere after the four minute mark, okay, which represents what it, what it thinks is the default length of your project, okay, and unless you move this end marker as it's called, this one here, see it'll pop up, yeah, end marker, it's going to try to bounce out four minutes of sound when your project is only supposed to be 30 seconds. And actually, I'll, I'll let you fudge a little bit and go between 30 and 60 seconds, because I, even working on this myself this morning, 30 seconds is really short for some of these. So 30 to 60 seconds should be the length of your project, okay? Um, if you simply grab this marker and move it over, that's going to ensure that it doesn't bounce out four minutes of sound. It actually will bounce out the time between the beginning marker and the end marker, okay? Which is what we want, okay? Um, so if I now take this, oh yeah, and it might be helpful also, we did the uh, time marker on the, the grid, but you can also here switch over to time as well, so you, this displays time at the top, okay? So this little icon here for display mode, time is actually going to be useful to see that because we're not really dealing with musical time on this project, okay? Uh, once you're happy with it, you've listened to it, you want to uh, actually export this, okay? Uh, you need to do what's called bounce the audio, okay? Uh, so whereas it might be called render in a video file or export in some other programs, uh, the term in most DAWs is what's called bounce. So in the file menu, you want to look for bounce. And if we do project or section, so I'll zoom in here, okay? Again, bounce, project or section. There's also a keystroke stroke command B. That's going to bring up this window, and I've added screenshots of this window to the uh, submission link for your draft. But just to highlight what you want to look for here, uh, I don't want to go that far in. Okay. Uh, first thing you want, I actually for the draft, I want you to bounce two different versions. I want you to bounce this PCM as well as M4A. Okay. PCM is uncompressed audio. M4A is compressed audio, okay? Uh, so I want you to bounce both versions. When you have it on PCM, you want to check these settings and make sure they match mine, okay? So AIF, 16-bit, 44, 100, interleaved, and none, okay? And again, I've got a screenshot of this on Blackboard, so you can double-check this, okay? Under M4A, you should be able to just leave this on default, AAC, 320 kilob kilobots per second, okay? Uh, the last thing you should check is this here. So these time settings are actually showing you it's going to start rendering at zero and it's going to go to 39 seconds. Uh, you can ignore this one hour mark. The, the audio time always starts counting at one hour. I'm not quite sure why. It just, it just does. Okay. So we're going to bounce from zero seconds to 39 seconds. Okay. You want your normalized setting to off. And if I hit OK at this point, because both of these are checked, it's actually going to bounce the AIF and the M4A audio for me. So I hit OK. It's going to ask me where to save it. It should ask me for inside my project folder, a bounces folder. And if I hit bounce here, just that easy, I've got the two sound files I need. Okay, so if I go back to my project, let's see. Folder, there should be a subfolder called bounces in which my AIF and my M4A files are. These are the two files that I want you to hand in for the draft on Wednesday. Okay, I want you to hand in both versions of those. You should be able to attach both of them to Blackboard. Okay, for Monday's deadline, it's a little bit different. And it's actually, I want you to compress this. Uh, file, folder. Okay, so if you take this project folder and you just simply control click on it, you'll see this option that says compress and it'll spit out this zip file. This is what I need you to, to actually attach on Monday for the final version of your project. Okay, um, 
That's all the technique I wanted to show you. So that's the thing that I said was going to take 15 minutes. It actually took me 20 plus minutes. So I apologize for that. Probably because I had to talk through it rather than just doing it in my office, right? So talking slows me down a little bit. Um, should I back up and restart and do it a little more slowly so you guys can follow along? Yes?